Hi, I'm James, and today I'm going to show you how to make a lovely winter minestrone soup. Now, I'm going to take you through the ingredients first, uh, and then I'll take you through the equipment that I'm using. Very basic equipment today, we just have a pot really, and I'm cooking on a Miele induction cooktop. But let's talk about the ingredients. Uh, these ingredients are relative of the season. Now, minestrone, there's not really a recipe really for a minestrone. It's, it's a soup that's cooked throughout the year and it's harnessing the best of the ingredients that are around in the season. So you'll see the ingredients that I've got today are reflective of winter. I've got some celeriacs and a couple of narrow. Uh, I'll, I'll show you all the ingredients now that we have. We have here, we have some red onion. Now I like to use red onion in my minestrone, a bit more color. Um, I have some celery. I have some carrot. And these three ingredients here are just sort of roughly diced. Um, when you're dicing your ingredients, try and get them you know, small enough to fit on a soup spoon. You don't want to go too large that they're not going to fit on your soup spoon. The celery is really good because you can get some really odd shapes. I've tried to keep the celery in the little half moon shapes and it's just going to look better uh, within, the, within the bowl when you serve it. I have some garlic. Now, the garlic that I'm using is not finely crushed, it's just sliced. And the reason I like to slice it is because I don't like to sort of lose a lot of the flavour and the oils of the garlic. I don't like to lose that on the chopping board. So I've just sliced it and again, some really good uh, shapes there within the soup. I've got some parsley stalks. Now, parsley I'm going to use towards the end of the soup to garnish it up and bring some freshness and some colour. Um, but with the soup, especially this minestrone, what we're going to do is not waste anything. So I'm going to use the parsley stalks for flavour. I have some pancetta. Now, if you can't find pancetta, please go and just grab some bacon, but you really want some salty kick. Pancetta is going to give it a bit more spice, just a bit more robust flavour. I have a parmesan rind. Now, please don't throw away your parmesan rinds. When you finish with your parmesan, keep them stashed in the fridge. Uh, submerge them in olive oil is a really good thing to do as well, because then you've got some flavoured olive oil. But when you come to making a minestrone soup, this is going to really give you a real burst of umami. Um, which is going to make your soup just taste that much better. So that's the rind there of the parmesan. Now I've also got the rind of the pancetta. Again, we're not wasting anything. So the rind of the pancetta is going to go in as well. I have a winter herb and today I'm going to use some sage. Now, you don't have to use sage. Look, use what you've got growing in your garden if you've got herbs in the garden. So I had some sage, but try and use a nice woody herb, like a winter herb. Sage, rosemary, thyme, oregano, marjoram, if you can find it's amazing herb marjoram. Here we've got the leaves of the celery and also the parsley leaves. So again, don't waste anything. We're going to use the leaves of the celery. Over here we have some cannellini beans. Now, I like to use cannellini beans or any type of bean within my minestrone. Not pasta. I just find pasta fills you up a bit too much, but hey, if you want to use pasta, go hard. Use some brisoni, some macaroni, but I like to use the cannellini beans. I have some whole peeled tomatoes. I don't like to use the crushed tomatoes. I like to use the whole peeled because when we get in there, we're going to squeeze it up and get a bit of texture. I have in here some celeriac. Now, the celeriac I have just sitting in some water so it doesn't oxidize. And I'm going to use celeriac in place of potato. So again, it's a winter inspired soup and we're going to use celeriac in this case. And then this final ingredient here, if you can find it, this is really awesome. That's going to be around in the winter. And it's what's called Cavolo Nero. Um, also called Tuscan kale, black cabbage, uh, but it's just amazing if you can find it. So Cavolo Nero, um, you could use savoy cabbage, you could use cabbage, you could use silver beet, you could use spinach, but you just want to bring, or Swiss chard if you wanted to, but you just want to bring some nice sort of green leafy veg uh, within that soup. And then we also have some chicken stock, um, vegetable stock, beef stock, chicken stock. I'm using chicken stocks today. Uh, and then over here I've got some salt and some pepper. I'm using sea salt flakes today and freshly cracked pepper. Not too much pepper, not too much salt, because I've got these bad boys here, which is the parmesan rind and also the pancetta rind and the pancetta, I'm going to get a lot of salt within that. So just be a bit wary of your seasoning with the salt there. And over here, the equipment that I'm using today is a stock pot. And we've got a spatula and there is a ladle bouncing around somewhere. We're gonna use the ladle when we come to serve the soup. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start cooking the soup and show you how easy it is to make. It's probably going to take, oh, I don't know, 45 to 50 minutes from start to finish to cook and then simmer. Um, you could let it simmer for longer if you wanted to. The vegetables might break down a bit. Um, and you'll find this minestrone soup will taste better the next day as soups and bolognese sauces do because the flavours really develop. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make it. Okay, let's begin this minestrone. Now, I've got a stock pot here. It's a five litre stock pot. Uh, we wouldn't call it a stock pot, just a large pot really. Uh, and I'm going to cook it on the Miele induction cooktop. And I'm going to use or start 
with induction setting seven. The one ingredient that I forgot to tell you about was extra virgin olive oil. So look, I'm gonna put about three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil into this pot. One, two, three. Do use extra virgin olive oil. So, olive oil is in the pan. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat that up and we're going to fry the onions, the carrot, and the celery. Now, I'm gonna fry that for about 20 minutes. I may need to drop down to induction setting six, depending on the heat control there, um, but 20 minutes. And while I'm, uh, while I'm sauteing what's called the sofrito, I'm going to add a good pinch of salt. And when you're cooking something like a minestrone soup, a bolognese sauce, a Napoli sauce, something along these sort of lines, season the ingredients as you go. You're frying onion and garlic, season the onion and garlic with a bit of salt. Adding some carrot, season the carrot. Seasoning as you go, creating layers. Um, sort of rely on the seasoning and the salt to season as you go. Good little tip for you. Yeah. We're gonna take the onion, and the onion's gonna go in with the carrot, and also the celery. Now, good pinch of salt, as I said. So I'm using sea salt flakes. Little pinch, chef's pinch. <laughs> And as I said, we're gonna cook that for 20 minutes. So I'll continue to use induction setting seven until I notice that it's getting a little bit too hot. Um, I don't wanna get a lot of caramelization, but I wanna break down the flavors, I wanna break down the cells of the vegetables, and I want to introduce a lot of flavor. So what we're gonna do is after 20 minutes, you'll see that the sofrito will be well cooked and it'll be well soft and really, really some nice residual sugars have been developed. Okay, so my celery, my carrots, and my onions. I've had about five minutes at this stage, so this frito is starting to smell. I'm starting to get those flavors uh, developing. And uh, yeah, the heat's okay. That's induction setting seven, so the heat's okay. Now, if you want to find this recipe, you will find it on the Miller Experience website, millerexperience.com.au. Um, but look, I'll take you through the ingredients as we go here, and I probably forgot to mention that as we started. When it comes to making soups as a chef, I don't tend to weigh and measure too much. Soups are just for me, like when I make a soup at home, it's just, what have I got in the fridge to use up? Let's use this, let's use this, let's not waste anything, and let's just, you know, ad-lib, and that's what chefs can do. But look, what I've got in this pot, if you want to follow the recipe, which I know a lot of you do, I've got one Spanish onion, I've got one medium to large carrot, and I've got two celery stalks. Now, if you don't have celery, you could use fennel. If you don't have onion, well, pretty much you need onion. You could use leek if you wanted to as well, uh, but I'm more partial to an onion. All right, so the sofrito has been cooking now for 10 minutes. It's still on induction setting seven. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now, after the 10 minutes of the initial cooking now, what I'm going to add, I'm gonna add the pancetta. So for the final 10 minutes of the sofrito cooking, what's gonna happen is the pancetta is gonna develop flavor. We're gonna render out some of that fat. So in with the pancetta. So now we're going to give the sofrito and the pancetta the final 10 minutes. We're going to really ramp up the flavor now. This is where it's going to happen. This is where, very important, this is where we're developing the flavor. Now, as I said, if we don't cook these vegetables down for this 20 minutes to start with, we're not going to have a really good base. We're not going to have a really good foundation of flavor for our soup. All right, 20 minutes is up, and my sofrito is ready to go. I'm ready to go to the next stage. I'm ready to add the next ingredient. And if you could smell this, my goodness, it's just wafting up through the center here. So, next ingredient. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the garlic. Now, as I said, the garlic that I like to use in the minestrone, I like to slice it. I've got six garlic cloves. I like garlic, it's winter. Garlic is really, really good for you. So, if you can take a fair bit of garlic, pop a fair bit of garlic in. So in there with the six, let's get all those little slices into there. And I don't like to add the garlic at the start. Look, you can if you want, but just be careful you don't burn it. We don't want the garlic to go bitter. Uh, but you can add it with the sofrito if you want, but I like to add it at this stage now. And as soon as that garlic goes in there and it mixes with that pancetta fat and the olive oil, goodness me, you can just smell that sweetness straight away. And there's more surface area on that garlic too. So where it's gonna fry, you're gonna develop some more color, some more flavor, those sugars are gonna develop more, and the soup's gonna taste a lot better. Um, while we're sort of adding the garlic, I'm gonna add my sage as well. So this is where we're gonna add the hard winter herb. Now, I'm using sage. Uh, as I said, you could use uh, rosemary, you could use thyme, you could use oregano, um, you could use marjoram. 
But what I actually forgot to add is my parsley stalks. Now, if I added these parsley stalks towards the end and not now, I wouldn't have developed the flavor. So the parsley stalks are absolutely amazing. Don't throw out your parsley stalks. If you didn't want to use them within your soup, you could use your parsley stalks within a stock. Um, use it as part of what's called a bouquet garni. Um, but the parsley stalks are amazingly sweet. Um, now the parsley I'm using is the flat leaf parsley. You could use the curly parsley, but the curly parsley has a lot more deeper flavor. I probably wouldn't use it, I'd probably just go for the fur. Okay, so the garlic, the sage, and the parsley stalks, that I only forgot, have all been now cooking for an additional five minutes. So they've been cooking for five minutes, and what I've noticed, the sugars are starting to catch on the bottom of the pan. Uh, the pan, and that's where you need to actually monitor and maybe drop it down to induction setting six. Now, I've got quite a good iron, so I'm probably not going to drop down to induction setting six at this stage. I'm ready to add my next ingredient, which is going to be the whole peeled tomatoes. Now, the whole peeled tomatoes, I like whole peeled because I get a little bit more texture. Now, what I'm going to do is get a gloved hand. This is really good for the kids. If you want to get the kids involved, get them to do this. Let's squash these up with our hand and get in there and just give it a good old squash. Again, we'll have a bit more texture. And then we're gonna pop the tomatoes in to the pan. And you'll start to see, I'm gonna drop that down now to induction setting six. I'm gonna take my glove off very quickly. And I'm just gonna give that a stir. So I'll drop that down to induction setting six. Because what I wanna do is not now have those tomatoes burn. I want the sauce to reduce. I want to get nice and concentrated. But induction setting six is gonna be good. It's gonna to to come together in a nice little mass which it is now. Now, good little trick as well. Again, don't waste anything. Here is my tin of uh, the tin that I had the tomatoes in. I'm gonna rinse it out with a little bit of water because I don't want to lose any of that tomato flavor. All right, give it a swirl around. We're just rinsing out the tomato tin. In we go in there. And let's just cook this down for about probably two, three minutes. This is where we're just going to use our sense of perception here. And look, you know what? We're back up to induction setting seven. Because as soon as I've added those tin tomatoes, I've actually lost a bit of the heat. Made a nice little mess there. Hey, one thing about these induction cooktops, if you make a mess, they're really easy to clean. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in half of the Carvalho Nero. It's probably about five cups, probably about 200 grams. Cannellini beans, I've got two 400 gram tins. I'm going to use about two thirds of that now. The other third I'm going to squash up with my hands again, and that's going to thicken the soup at the end. Good little tip for you, how to thicken your minestrone. I'm then gonna add the stock, and then I'm gonna add the parmesan rind, and I'm going to add the pancetta rind, and we're going to then simmer for 30 minutes. I'll probably drop it down to induction setting six at that stage. I have a liter of chicken stock. You're just gonna add enough just to cover. You don't want the, the soup too thin. Minestrone should be a nice, rich, hearty, thickened soup. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add about a half a liter, we'll see how we go here, so. Chicken stock. As I said, could be vegetable, could be beef, could be mushroom stock if you want to. And you know what? I'm going to add about another 250. So in this pot here, I would have added about 750 mils. Parmesan rind, pancetta rind. So the one thing what you've got to do is just remember to fish it out before you serve it. You don't want to give spot. Well, I wouldn't mind a good soft bit of parmesan rind in Australia, but probably not the pancetta rind. So pop in, parmesan rind. And cheddar rind. This is now where we add the celeriac. Um, as I said, this could be potato. I prefer celeriac, it's a lot more flavor, and it's in peak season right now. You're gonna get some really good sized celeriac, so that's one large celeriac. And look, I'm just gonna go on induction setting eight. We're gonna bring it up to the boil, and then I'll drop it down to induction setting six. And as I said, we're just gonna simmer for half an hour, or until the Cavallo Nero is cooked, all the veggies are nice and soft. And you know what? After adding the celeriac, I'm going to add in the last, say, 250 mils of stock. There we go. Now, if you've run out of stock and you need to thin it, just add a little bit of water. It's quite okay. Well, I'm quite confident that you would have developed so much flavour by now that if you add a little bit of water towards the end, it's not going to dilute it. You've got the flavour already developed. Right, celeriac's now cooked. I'm quite happy to move on to probably the last stage of cooking, which is going to be, we're going to add the remainder of the Cavallo Nero. So in that goes there. 
Um, the couple of narrow that I've had in there cooking already has lost a bit of its vibrance, lost a bit of its colour. Um, and then also this couple of narrow, we're going to have some varied texture. Um, so the couple of narrow in earlier has cooked out, got nice and sweet, very soft. But this couple of narrow is going to add some brilliant sort of freshness and vibrance of colour. Uh, it's just going to offer a little bit more, more texture too. We're also going to get our remaining panel EVs. I'm going to put a glove on at this stage. Another thing you can involve the kids with, we're going to get the remaining cannellini beans and we're just going to squish them up. Now you can, if you want to, you can blend a bit of this um, remaining cannellini bean with a little bit of stock. Um, it'll just probably incorporate a little bit easier. Uh, but look, at this stage we're just going to blend it up and then that is just going to be dropped in to my pot. Message up. And we're just going to just distribute that throughout the soup. And as I said, once that breaks down, sort of breaks apart, this is going to aid the thickening. So this is pretty much there. I'm going to give it five more minutes just to let that bean come together. But what I'm also going to do now is we're going to fish out Parmesan rind. I did remember. No, that was the pancetta rind. Um, now we're going to find the Parmesan. It just get a little bit tricky sometimes because it can get a little bit sort of soft. Can break down. There it is. There it is. All right. There's the parmesan rind. Now, what's happened? Any of the cheese that was uh, on the end of that parmesan rind has actually just been incorporated into the soup, and it's sort of got like a, a creamy sort of a look now. It is amazing. Trust me. It smells awesome. All right. This is looking amazing. Very simple. The hardest thing about this is probably the preparation at the start. Just getting all the vegetables cut nice and evenly. This, my friends, is done. I'm just going to give it a final taste. All the veggies are cooked, I know that. The flavour is there, trust me, the flavour is there. Look, if anything, you may need a little pinch of salt in there. I'm going to say no. What I'm going to show you is a little bit of a trick. Finish it with a little bit of acid. I'm just going to put a little splash of red wine vinegar. Just a little splash, a little bit of freshness. This is going to bring out a little bit more flavour in all the vegetables. I'm going to finish it with celery and the parsley. This is just going to add, it, add a little bit more colour and freshness. To serve, what we're going to do, we're going to get a nice bowl and we're going to ladle it into the bowl. Texture's beautiful. Look at that, that's amazing. I'm just going to pop that there into the bowl finish it's essential you need parmesan all right so um, good grating of parmesan over the top as much as you want extra virgin olive oil bit of a drizzle there we go and then optional if you want a good grind of black pepper you'll find when I was cooking I didn't add any pepper at all this is the only stage that I'm adding pepper so there's our minestrone soup, very easy to prepare, amazingly well flavoured, it's an amazing soup. Please try it, jump on to the website, mealerexperience.com.au and you'll find the recipe for the uh, winter minestrone.